Why the fuck? Did Sean from Love Sack <laughs> hire a guy who just got off a 10-year bender on drugs? Sean Nelson from Love Sack. What a fucking guy, dude. Because, like, I, I I, think, you know, I go, people ask me, like, yo, what about Mike? I was like, gosh, I love the kid, saw something special in him. Then he, like, I gave him uh, the tools, he built the house. But Sean's <laughs> risk was a lot higher because you weren't even, like... A uh, promising young lad at that point. You would dog walker. Dog walker. Dog walker. <laughs> this is the thing. This is this dog is the main walker. part of the story. This is the main part of the story. That was not that long ago. You can do this if you're watching this and you're and you're like, yo, if I get clean tomorrow, Mike, I'm just at zero again. I'm just at the same level as everybody else. Actually, I'm still negative because when I got clean and I walked out of rehab, I walked out of rehab with a 400 credit score. Up to my eyes in fucking debt because all I had was a computer that I would pawn, unpawn, pawn, unpawn. At that point, it was so bad. I didn't see. I didn't know this. Every, uh, every I didn't know this, and that, this is why you are so uh, <laughs> worried oh, about saving money. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Please, I don't want to end up in a place where I need to pawn my computer. <laughs> <laughs> I try to save all my money, but like when you walk out and and all of your friends that you went to high school with, they're married and they work for Dell and they have a four hundred one k and they have stock options, and your mom's driving you to NA meetings. And you're 26 or you're 30 or you're 34 and you've never once had any idea about what to do in this on this spinning rock. Bro, this is crazy. This is fucking crazy, that, that, dude. That, 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 <laughs> that was me. That was me, bro. Oh my God. A, 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 all the way up until probably 20, 29, 29 years old. Jeez. I, I, here's what I will say to people watching this that have no clue. That, that have no clue what they want to do, how they want to do it. Because I was there. I was just there. It was a store. I was just there. I was just at it. Let me give you something. I started trying things. I, start, I, knew, I knew I had something, and I didn't know what it was. I didn't know I wanted to be a YouTuber. I didn't have the luxury of, of knowing what it was. But I knew I had something. And let me tell you this. Tell if my- you've made it through addiction or mental illness... You have something because a lot of people don't. If you are still kicking today, battling those demons, you have something because a lot of people didn't wake up today because they couldn't make it. They couldn't cut it and you fucking did. So you have something, but you might not know what it is. I like that a lot. I like that a lot, bro. I can't imagine. I can't imagine just overcoming that hurdle of drug addiction and looking around going, holy shit. What the fuck do I do? I I hate to say this, and I am cautious with it, but I'm gonna fucking say it. Don't take it as a direct comparison, please. But there are people that come home from war. They come home and they have nothing. Yeah. The VA turns their back yeah, on them. Yeah. Their family says, "Welcome back. You're back. Have fun." Veterans are dealing with it every day. Yeah. Not a direct comparison, but let me tell you how I felt. I walked out of rehab. I had nothing. I had nothing. No education, no fucking car, nothing. I was 26 years old with not a, a anything. And I and I started doing shit. Started walking those dogs. I started for, for, so first I my sister said, "Hey, listen, you know, we could you could be a you could pick up dog shit." Which I didn't sister? say I, Which my older sister? Jill. Jill? Jill. Jill is a very important part of my story. I've not, I don't think I've told you a lot about this, but my older sister was uh, like another mom to me. Oh. She t- she she loved me so dearly, and when she saw me start to get my things together, she activated hard, bro. Took me in, was like another mom, literally, and said, "Yo, pick up this dog shit." And and a part of me was like, "Pick up dog shit? You know how much fucking shit I sold the pet? Like fuck that shit." No, and I, but I did it. Yeah. And then it and then it went to running an entire camp for dogs, which is in this story, but is hilarious. I wish we should, I wish we had a picture of me with thirty dogs in the backyard, all different breeds, and I would make sure the pits didn't kill the fucking German shepherds. And I would, yeah, I would hang is, out with wow. I would hang out all day with Bailey and Harper and Snowflake and all my good friends. They were all dogs, others, no other people, <laughs> just me with a bunch of dogs. I did that for a while, but then I started picking up side things. I said, I like photos. I like, I think I can take photos. They're fun to do. That's fun. I saved up a little bit of money with my shitty job and my non-existence. And I had no friends because I had to write them all off because I wanted to get clean and stay clean. And I had no one, but I had a camera now. And so somebody said, whoa, what do you shoot that, that Canon 70D that you bought? I said, 
I'm a wedding photographer. <laughs> and I said, you're a wedding photographer? And I was like, yeah, that's right. I'm a wedding photographer. I had never even seen a wedding in my life at that point. It, I, I was 30 years old when I saw my first wedding. I'd never seen a fucking wedding in my life. Damn. I said, I'm a wedding photographer. They were like, well, it's, I, I know someone who's about to get married. Should I see she's on a budget. And they were like, well, what's, I was like, well, how does that work? And they're like, oh, I, I don't know. Go talk to her. So talk to her. They're like, oh, I'll give you 750 bucks. You're a wedding photographer. I was like, yeah, I'm a wedding photographer. Showed up at a wedding with a 70D and a fucking built-in flash. <laughs> a built-in flash. And took pictures of the bride and the, and the groomsmen. I took that money and I bought a DJI drone, Phantom One. And they said, what do you do with that drone, Mike? I said, I fly down the aisle behind the bride as she walks down the aisle. <laughs> and I was one of the first people no. to fly a drone over weddings. And I put it on YouTube and I'd send there. I was like, but that's 2,500. And so I started doing that. But then this is where calculations come in and you have to, and you have to calculate. That business grew to a point where I was making more money than the dog walking. But how long would it last? So I waited. And after six months went by of making more money than the dog walking, I said, no more dog walking. Hmm. And then it was photos. And then it was drones. And then I started writing. And I met somebody who was like, yo, you took great pictures at this wedding. Want to try writing? And so I wrote something for AOL. And then one day, I see an ad in, on Craigslist for a company called Lovesack that sells beanbag chairs. And it said... Personal assistant needed. And I was like, and it was like to grow my social media. And, and by the way, it was like 2012. Nobody knew how to grow social media except me. Except because you. I was an expert in the social media growth and branding world. Ah. At least that's what I said. <laughs> I, I had no yeah. idea. I got on the phone. So I, so I, I apply. He calls me one day. I'm sitting at Subway. This is the whole story's in there. Sitting at Subway with my boy, Pat. Patsy. Shout out, Patsy. Patsy, and shout out, Milford, Patsy. You, you know, you've talked Can't about Can't wait to meet Patsy. Um, me and him had, had fallen into a dark pit of uh, day trading, penny stocks. We thought, because by the way, I was a great penny trader. You may not believe it, but I've done it. I've tried everything. Yo. I get a call. He's like, hey, uh, Mike, this is Sean from Lovesack. And I was like, okay. He's like, yeah, I got your resume. He's like, you seem to be an expert in branding and, uh, and social media growth. I was like, that's right. He's like, what do you say you come in for a meeting next week in Stanford, Connecticut? And I was like, all right, yeah, I'll be there. Next week rolls around, throw on my one button down that I have. I got a Pico at Marshall's for 29 bucks. I rolled into this place. It's like some fancy restaurant because Stanford's like the up, upgraded like Connecticut, part of Connecticut. And I sit down. I have a conversation with him. And in that first conversation, he saw something. He saw something. He said, I don't. He said it to me day one. I don't know what it is, but like something about you, like there's something there. Uh -huh. there's something there like you you, you got it yeah. you know how to talk yeah. you know how, you, you got that spunk yep i started working for him and one day i told him i said hey listen man um i haven't been completely honest with you <laughs> <laughs> i have no idea what i'm doing <laughs> not only that but i'm also a felon narcotics addict dealer i have a horrible past <laughs> i'm so sorry i never told you <laughs> The way Sean was brought up and the way Sean's religion goes and the way he is as a person is to forgive and to give people a chance. Mormons. He's a Mormon. Yep. Sean's a devout Mormon. Yep. Mormon. He gave me a chance. That chance led to a text message between myself and the Logan Paul who wanted some beanbag chairs for 1600 Vine. Mike, your life is so weird, dude. Yeah. This is hitting me this podcast. Yeah, yeah. Bro, this makes no sense, Mike. <laughs> <laughs>